this past week, I was shocked. I was standing right there. I had a conversation with one of our drywallers, uh, the guys that are working on the sheetrock. And the thing about this conversation was different than I've experienced before. We are speaking to each other in Spanish, which I have been saying for 40 years I'm learning Spanish. Estoy aprendiendo español. Uh, it's a long, it's a long, it's a long process apparently, and I feel like I can speak okay. I mean, I can get, I can get by, but it is really hard to understand a native Spanish speaker because they speak so fast. Just like in English, I speak so, I speak so quickly. All my words run together, and I was having this conversation with this guy in Spanish. Both of us speaking in Spanish, and we were talking about how hard it is to understand each other. And he was saying, English is so confusing. There's so many words that have different meanings. That, like the same word has different meanings or the same word will have different pronunciations. And, and I was saying, that's not so much my issue with understanding Spanish. It's just that it's so fast, más rápido, ay, ay, ay. And, uh, uh, and so it was this cool little conversation. But what I noticed was different. I understood him. It was, it, I was having this realization, and I, I even told him, dude, you know, in Spanish, I understand you. How is this possible? And I, I don't know why, but he just spoke at a, at, the, at a speed I could get and using words I could get. But I felt so empowered by that conversation where other times I might feel intimidated to jump into a conversation but, because I just don't know if I'm going to understand but all of a sudden, wow, I was like, I could be your friend. This is cool. Walls came down. Possibilities emerged because I just felt empowered. And I don't know if, if that was a gift from God. I sort of felt like it at the time because it just really caught my attention. Wow, I understand. And I'm going to talk about a place in the Bible where this kind of thing happened in just a moment. But I, I just want to give you some context. We're in this series called Building Hope and Life. Building Hope and Life. And I've already talked uh, about a couple, a couple aspects of that. The, the first one was finish our church. And we've been talking about a lot about that. Man, we are, we're doing it. We're finishing our, our building. It's, it's so great. For the last couple weeks, I talked about deepen our passion. And I tell you what, church, oh my goodness, last Sunday at the end of service, I was, I was blown away as every person came out of your seats and came forward to say, Lord, I, I want to be passionate about you. I want to pursue you passionately. And it's so interesting to me, uh, earlier in worship today, we didn't plan uh, that the way we did prayer. That was just, I feel like, spontaneous and spirit-led. And I believe it happened because last week, our congregation got together and said, Lord, we want to passionately pursue you. And all of a sudden now, this service was different. Wow, God is here. It's so great. I love it. So Lord, deepen our passion for you. May we be known as a passionate people, passionately following Jesus with all of our hearts, with all of our gusto, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then today, I, I want to talk about this next, this next little aspect of building hope and life. Awaken our city. Awaken our city. And it's a pretty cool story in the Bible of an awakening. It's in Acts chapter 2. And I'm pretty much going to be in the book of Acts today. So I want to encourage you to take out your Bible. If you have your Bible on your device, on your phone, that's fine. That's great. Take it out. If you're looking for a good Bible app, look for U version, Y-O-U version app. And it's that's great. And then we always read out of the NLT. That's a, a, a translation of the Bible. So Acts chapter 2, in the NLT, if you've got your Bible, please crack it open. And let's get God's word in our hands and in our hearts and our minds. So the context for this in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, the co context for this is that uh, Jesus had given his life on the cross. He died, rose again on the third day. And uh, he, Jesus said, now I want you to wait in the city of Jerusalem where all this stuff happened. I want you to wait for what the Father, our Heavenly Father, promised. 
and that is the Holy Spirit is going to come. The, so the, the, the people who believed in Jesus, we think there's about 120 people at the time who had put their faith in Jesus, and they, they were all together. They were, the church was gathered in unity, and they're praying they're seeking God. They're saying, God, we want that promise you talked about. Jesus, you talked about this promise of uh, the Holy Spirit is going to come. We want him to come to our lives. We don't know what it's going to look like or be like, but we want him to come. So they're waiting on God. And, and let's jump down to verse 2. Acts 2, chapter 2, verse 2. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Now, if you've been in church for a while, you hear that and you go, yada, 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 I know the story, whatevs. No, listen, you guys, they're in a setting like this. And all of a sudden, indoors, there's a tornado. Okay, this is big. This is unusual. This is otherworldly. All right, and that's not all that happened. It, it, that windstorm, it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. Can you imagine looking around this room and you see fire coming down on people's heads? That's what was happening. There's this rushing wind. They're praying. They're saying, God, come. There's this rushing sound of a rushing wind. Fire is falling. And verse 4, and everyone present was filled, someone say filled, was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Okay, you guys, this is so weird, so powerful, so unusual, but the church is gathered, they're praying, send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes with a huge sound of a mighty windstorm, Tongues of fire, flames landing on people's heads, but they're not getting hurt or burned. And then they start speaking in languages they had never learned before. All of a sudden, they were empowered to speak. And I had just a teeny glimpse of what that would feel like this week. But these people, they, they, they were, uh, it was a festival time. It was the, the Jewish festival of Pentecost. And, and so the city of Jerusalem was crowded with way more people than usual. It was like a pilgrimage. People came from all over the known world. People came from the Middle East, from Northern Africa, from Europe, and they, they all came together to Jerusalem to, for, to celebrate this festival. And so they're all there. And then all of a sudden, and I, I believe, I don't, I don't know that we know, no, no for certain, but I believe that this prayer meeting, we often say it happened in a house. I believe this happened in the temple. Uh, and there's, there's good evidence for that. But so they're there, they're, the Christians are meeting there in the Jewish temple. It's where they're used to worshiping and gathering. So they're there. And all of a sudden, the Holy, they're praying for the Holy Spirit. He comes. It's crazy. There's wind. There's fire. There's other languages. But that's not all. Then all of a sudden, um, the, the people that were there in the city for the festival, they heard this loud noise. They came running to see what, what is going on. So this is not just some Christians saying, I felt a little breeze today. This was an audible windstorm sound. So much so that thousands of people came running to see what is going on here. Now, they, they came, and in verse 6, it says, they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. So here's all, there's 120 Christians, we think, uh, that's a, the approximate number there. All of a sudden, they start speaking in other languages, Italian, the languages of North, uh, of North Africa, of, of, of the Middle East. Uh, they start speaking in these other languages that they've never learned before because God was giving them this ability. Verse 7, the crowds were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee. And yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. And then the Bible lists out all these different areas where they were. And it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's symbolic. This is, this is so amazing. But he's, he, they're basically saying people from all over the known world at that time were here 
and we are hearing our languages, be, we're hearing uh, our own language, and we're understanding, and we hear all these people, it's verse 11, we hear all these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. And they stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. So I, I believe that what happened here is that there's 120 people, Christians, they're on fire with the Holy Spirit, literally on fire with the Holy Spirit. They're, his heat, his light has just come upon them. They're speaking in languages they've never studied. And I believe that every person around them in these crowds, they were, uh, they were hearing God was doing a miracle of hearing as well as a miracle of speaking. And they, they were able to hear this message, God has done wonderful things, and he sent his son, Jesus, to be our Savior. They're, they're hearing this spoken clearly in an understandable way. This is an awakening of the city. This is, this is an awakening where all of a sudden people were just sort of going about their own business. They, they were coming to this festival, which they did every single year at the same time. It was a traditional uh, thing for them. They knew what to expect. They knew what would happen. They knew the prayers. They knew the scriptures. They knew everything that would happen. But all of a sudden, God shows up in an unexpected way, in a powerful way, in an unusual way, and it caught their attention. So all of a sudden, the, the people that have gathered in this city are now aware the Lord is in this place. I wasn't aware of it. Now I'm aware of it, and I see what you did there, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that. So this pe the, the people of this city, they weren't aware God was there. And all of a sudden, they're aware, wow, God is here in a powerful way. May that happen in our day in our city, where people are just going about their business, doing their thing, not, not necessarily anything bad, but just doing their own thing sort of apart from God, and may all of a sudden God catch their attention. May there be a great awakening in our city, in Auburn, and in the southeast Puget Sound region. We want a, a great awakening everywhere, but this is our area. And we're praying for our area to experience a great awakening of God. Lord, awaken our city to you. Awaken our city to, uh, to their sin, just like you've awakened me to my sin and my need for a Savior. Awaken this city to, to the fact that God loves us. Awaken this city to the fact that God is real. Awaken this city to the fact that God has a good plan for our lives. May God awaken our city. Lord, you did it back then 2,000 years ago. Do it again today, we pray, Lord God. Awaken our city. Lord, we want an awakening. God, in this case, sent a miracle, and it was an audible, visible miracle, and he just caught everyone's attention, and they came running. And you know what happened? Peter got the opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Gospel is one of those church words. It just means good news. Peter got the opportunity to, uh, to preach to these thousands of people that came running. And if you, if you look at, um, the, uh, the, you can see today like models of the temple. And there's just this huge open space where people can gather, where thousands of people can gather. And that's one of the reasons I think maybe it wasn't in a house where this happened but it was, was in a big public space like this. Peter has this opportunity to speak to all these thousands of people, and in one day, 3,000 people put their faith in Jesus. In one day, in one gathering. It's so amazing. This was the first great Christian awakening, awakening to Jesus Christ. And you know what Peter's message was? You might have heard it before if you've been to our services before, because every Sunday at the end of our service, I preach Peter's message. This was his message. Turn away from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. Be baptized in water, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That was the message. And all of a sudden, 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus that day. And it's so funny because when Peter was walking this earth, now remember, Jesus has only been dead and risen for, I think, what would be 50 days at this, at this point. I think 40 or 50, I think 50, 50 for Pentecost. Um, uh, and so this is very recent. Peter had been the one, the mouthy one. He, 
Yeah, he was, he was the mouthy one. He would say awkward things. He would blurt out stuff inappropriate. He even, like, rebuked Jesus one time. Uh, and, you know, like, Peter was the mouthy one, but all of a sudden, when the Holy Spirit came, he was God's mouthpiece. No longer the mouthy one. Now God's mouthpiece. Wouldn't that be cool if God did it for us? Yes, I, I love it. So great. The good news is that God empowers his people to get his work done, to get his mission accomplished. And I want you to know God empowers you. Today, we even, we even took some time, not, not planned, but just to listen to God. Man, God's got stuff to say to you. God, God's got a plan for you. God has a mission for you. You can be God's mouthpiece. And it can just, it wouldn't have to be to thousands. It could just be to one person that you turn towards Jesus, that you encourage that person to, to come to Jesus. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over to Acts chapter 3. So just go to the next chapter, Acts chapter 3. And the, the setting is, so it's a, a, a little while after this time when the Holy Spirit had come, Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples, they go to the temple because they're still kind of doing their big gatherings at the temple. That's where they used to go to worship. And they, they see a man at the, at the gate. There are several gates to the temple. And they see a man at the gate that was described as the beautiful gate. And at the beautiful gate was someone who was broken. And he was, he, the Bible describes him as lame. He was not able to walk on his own. So people had to carry him in to the temple, and he would sit there at the gate and beg for money. Well, Peter and John came uh, for, the, for the afternoon uh, prayer gathering, and, and verse 5, we'll pick up the story, Acts 3, 5. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Now, this is very interesting because sometimes we stop there, but what did Peter do? He reaches down. Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Okay, this is a miracle. This is an amazing thing. I believe that it was not planned. Peter's just going there to pray. And he sees this need, and the Holy Spirit just says to him, you stop and talk to this guy right now because I'm going to do something really cool for this person. So he stops. Peter obeys. He hears a word. Stop and pray for the guy. Or he sees a picture in his mind. This guy could be standing up, uh, able to walk on his own. And just a little impression, that's, that was enough. And Peter stopped, and he heeded that. He paid attention to that, and he acted on it, and he said, in Jesus' name, get up and walk, and he got up and walked, and all of a sudden, he was not satisfied to just walk, so he started walking and leaping and praising God. All of a sudden, this man is passionate about God, because God just did something in his life. He did a miracle for him. So guess what happened then? All of a sudden, everyone's like, wait a minute. The people, the other worshipers that were gathered there at the temple, wait a minute. This is, that's the guy that we already always saw begging. He was not able to stand, and now he's jumping up and down, and a crowd comes running. What is going on? There is a great awakening on this day. And they, they come, and they're like, what, what is happening? The, the, the lame man is walking, jumping. He's clinging to the disciples. They go into the temple. They're, they're so excited. And, and they, 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 they see what they have not, they're not used to seeing. That in the name of Jesus, someone could be healed. Someone who could not stand could rise. It's so interesting that when uh, just a few weeks earlier, when Jesus was arrested, when they were about to take him to the cross, but when he was arrested, Peter was holding back. And when someone said, hey, wait a minute, aren't you a follower of Jesus? He swore and said, no, I don't, I, I don't even know that man. Who, what guy are you even talking about? I don't know Jesus. He was his closest disciple. And now... Peter is using Jesus' name the way it's meant to. In Jesus' name, get up and walk. 
and doing miracles. So the man who was ashamed of Jesus' name is now praying in Jesus' name and, and healing in Jesus' name. It's a pretty amazing thing. Why did that happen? Because God empowered Peter with the Holy Spirit. And that's my message for you today. God empowers you to share Jesus. God empowers you to share Jesus. You have the same power in you as Peter had in him. Uh, can you imagine yourself at work where you're, you're heading towards um, your usual spot and, and for some reason you just feel like, man, I, I feel like I should turn over here and talk to this, this coworker. Or I should go over here to this, this other desk and just say hi. Or I should go over here on the job site and just, just pause for a minute. And then God does a healing through you, a miracle through you because you're listening and following him. That could be you because God empowers you to share Jesus. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 4. Next chapter in the book of Acts, verse, tw verse 29 to 31 in that area. So here's the context. Peter and John got put in jail for healing that guy. Isn't that amazing? The reason was he, was he was put in jail by the people who wanted Jesus dead. But Jesus rose again, and he sent his Holy Spirit, and his followers are now more on fire than ever. And so the, the leaders were they, like, we don't want anyone to follow Jesus. So they take Peter and John, they put him in jail. And um, when, when they were released, they, they prayed. The church was praying for them. God helped them to get out of jail. They got out of jail. That's, a, that's another whole story. But when they were released, you would think that they would say, they would pray a prayer like this, Lord, please protect us from jail. Lord, please keep us safe from our enemies. Lord, please help us to always just be safe and at peace and happy. Lord, please just protect. That was not their prayer. They got put in jail for practicing, for following Jesus and for healing someone. Verse 29, this is their prayer. And now, O oh Lord, hear their threats. The threats were, you better stop preaching in Jesus' name or you're in trouble. Hear their threats, Lord, and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Lord, you hear what's going on online. You hear what's going on on Facebook. You hear what's going on on CNN, on Fox. You hear what's going on in my news feed. You hear what's going on. You hear their threats. But Lord, we're praying that you would give us great boldness in preaching your word. Lord, stretch out your hand with healing power. How does he stretch out his hand through he with healing power? Through your hand. That's how he does it now. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That was their prayer. And this is what happened. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, the building shook. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they preached the word of God with boldness. Wow! This is an awakening. And this is why I say, God, give us an awakening today in our day, in our city, in our area. Man, after Jesus was crucified, Peter was afraid. He was holding back. He was holed up. The doors were locked. He wasn't going to let anybody see him because he didn't want to be crucified next for being a follower of Jesus. But then God empowered Peter to share Jesus. He gave him his Holy Spirit. And, G and Peter not only shared Jesus one-on-one -on -one with the guy at the gate, but he also shared Jesus with thousands. It was pretty amazing, the transformation in Peter. He went from uh, from uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna save my own self uh, from from being uh, uh, um, indicted with Jesus to I'm gonna preach and tell everyone about Jesus. That is God's empowerment. That is what God does in you. God empowers you to share Jesus beyond your own ability. God empowers you to share Jesus beyond your own ability. But I'm an introvert. But I'm an extrovert. It doesn't matter. Beyond your own ability. I always mess up. I always say the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. Beyond your own ability. God empowers you to share Jesus beyond your own ability. 
pretty cool. I hope that you get a hold of this in your life because if you did, you would be empowered to share Jesus in some of the ways and maybe other ones, but some of the ways we've talked about today through, through, uh, through um, just praying, God, use me, through, through um, uh, s- s- being obedient on the street or wherever you are and just reaching out and seeing a healing or a miracle. You, you would be empowered to speak, to share, to share with someone, Jesus has changed my life and he could change your life too. That is what God has for you. So, so if that's so great and we, we're so inspired by Peter's story, why don't we all just do it? Why don't we all just step out in the power that God has given us? Why don't we lean in? Why don't we pray for power? Lord, send your Holy Spirit. Let me be your witness. Why don't, why don't we do that? Well, I think there's, there's some reasons, probably many reasons, but for one thing, can I just call this out? If you're anything like me, I get distracted by the ordinary. There is plenty to do every day. I literally have a list of lists. I have I have a list app with multiple lists on it, with hundreds of items that all are beckoning me to do them. Seriously, I'm not exaggerating. I, I have that. And so it is very easy to be distracted by the ordinary. Not a big sin thing or something like that, but just there's plenty to do every day so that you could get to the end of a day and have never, possibly never asked God, what do you have for me to do today? Who do you want me to share Jesus with today? That, that's, that's one thing. Another thing is some of us, unfortunately, the enemy has beaten you up a little bit in your life. And some of you are very hard on yourself and you say, I, I don't know that God would ever use me. I, I don't know that he would empower me to ever share Jesus with, with someone or, or to extend a hand of healing to someone. I, I just don't know if God would do that. Well, God wants to do that. Yes, he took uh, so many people, uh, uh, quiet ones, men, women, loud ones, brash ones, awkward ones, and he poured his Holy Spirit into them and changed the world. It's pretty amazing. Some of us, can I, can I just be real here? We're intimidated by non-believers. Oh my goodness, they say, if I say anything about God, I'm a bigot, or I'm this, or I'm that. Who cares what they say? Why does, why does, why does what they say matter? It should matter that God, what God says. Like, that's, that's what matters. What does God say about you? Because in the end of it all, we're going to be face-to-face with God, not the internet writers, not that person on the news. Not, not your, your person who is saying bad stuff. Let's not be intimidated by non-believers. We're believers, amen? And even when we leave this place, we're still believers. We still have good news to share, and God wants to share it through you. What if you dared believe that God would empower you? Even you, even me. What, what if you believed? What, what would God do through your life today at the restaurant? tomorrow at work or at school what would god do i i can just only imagine what what if you just start every day and pray lord what do you want me to do today i'm listening i'm going to shut up for a minute lord what are you saying what, that, that that's not just a tangible step that you could take to let god empower you sometimes we're just so busy we just we just ignore this great power of god that's in us what if you let your compassion for a broken person outweigh your fear of praying and nothing, not seeing anything, anything happen? What if you said, you know what? I'm going to pray because that's what God has called me to do, and I'm going to leave the results to God. Wow, what would happen if all of us in this room left and planned to pray for someone who needs healing this week. Wow. What would God do through a yielded, empowered person? What if you just look for extraordinary God moments in your life, in your day-to-day life? What, what if you allowed yourself to fully believe God wants an awakening in Auburn? 
in Bonnie Lake, in Federal Way, in Kent, in Covington, in Sumner, Puyallup, Enumclaw. What, what if you dared to believe that? God wants to bring an awakening. And what if you leaned into it and prayed for it and said, and here am I. Use me in some way, Lord. Wow. Your mail carrier gets saved. Your kid's teacher will get healed. That unruly neighbor you would uh, reconcile. What would happen? The possibilities are endless. You are already empowered, and you are empowered. We know from Acts 1-8, you are empowered to share Jesus beyond your ability. You are empowered. What would happen if you step out in that power? Ooh, it's going to be a good week. It's going to be a good year. I love it. Why don't you stand to your feet, everybody? Let's pray. And would you join me? You know, I really want to just, I want to encourage you, church, that when we pray, we, we don't intend it to be a show. But we're on a mic so the people online can hear, so the people in the back can hear. We want everyone to hear. But I never want to pray instead of you. I just want to lead you. I want to be an example of praying. So church, would you pray that God would empower you and that you would be his witness. All right? Will you, will you say, if you will, pray that way. Say, uh-huh. Okay, good, good. Why don't you lift your voice? That's good. That was encouraging. I like that. Why don't you lift your voice and let the church pray. Oh, Lord, give us great boldness. Okay, let's go. Let's pray. For a great awakening, Lord God. I pray, Holy Spirit, come right now with fire, with wind, with power, with languages, with tongues, Lord God, with gifts of the Spirit, Lord God. Come right now, I pray. Descend on this place. Shake this place, Lord God, and do something powerful and new in us, Lord God. Shake our, uh, shake our experience when we leave this place, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you would give us a word. Give us a picture, Lord God. Show us who to pray for. Show us how to pray, Lord God, and do great things for Lord God, we just, we your church, we lift our voice, just like the church did way back there in the Bible story that we read. Lord, I, we lift our voice today and we say, Lord, thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for freeing us from those addictions. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a new future. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a hope. Thank you, Lord, for giving us eternal life. And Lord, we just lift our voice and we say, Lord, give us great boldness to share that with the people around us. Lord, right, Lord, right now, we just lift up our coworkers to you right now. Would you, in, by name, church, just lift up your coworkers. Lord God, I pray for this one. I pray for this one. I pray for this one. That, that you would speak through me. That you would heal through me, Lord. That you would draw them to you through me, Lord. We lift up our coworkers right now. Our classmates. We lift up our neighbors. Our extended family that doesn't know Jesus. Lord, work through us. Work through us. You've already empowered us, Lord God. Help us to step out in your power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let us see a great awakening in our families, Lord. Let there be a great awakening in our families, Lord. I have family members I want to see put their full faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, Lord, that, that for each of our families there would be a great awakening, Lord, in our workplace, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, Lord. Let there be a great awakening and use us. Use us, Lord. Use us. Use us, Lord. Help us to step out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And, and let's just stay in an attitude of prayer. I, I, I know some of you, you might be new to church. You might be new to Jesus. You might not know what is going on right here. We're talking about a God who is real, a God who is love, and a God who is powerful. And he knows you. He cares about you so much that Jesus would come give his life on the cross for you. And I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus to save you. How do you do that? Turn away from your sin, everything that you do that separates you from God, and your sin nature, which we all have. Turn away from that. Turn your, the other way. Turn your life over to Jesus. Give your life to God and let him lead. If you today want to become a Christian, if you want to put your faith in Jesus, maybe you're coming back to Jesus, Maybe you've never fully solidified the fact that you're a follower of Jesus. Would you just raise your hand right now? And you can do it in the room or online. And by raising your hand, you're saying, I choose Jesus. Uh, I'm, I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm becoming a Christian today. I'm going to be a follower. I'm going to be his apprentice. 
And I'd love to just coach you in a prayer. Church, would you help me out? Everybody pray out loud to Jesus. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now. Lead me. I'll be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we just welcome people who are putting their faith in Jesus today? So good. And we have, a, if you just read. If you just raise your hand or if you just put your faith in Jesus, we have a resource for you. We'll tell you more about that. Yes. So if today was your day, if you followed Jesus for the first time, or even if you are newer to following Jesus and you just want to know, like, what are my next steps? Your next step is to walk out the worship center and meet me, you know, after you give me like two minutes, you know, because you're farther ahead than me. So I have to like run around that way. So you meet me at the table, at the following Jesus table, and then I'll get you a book. It's a free book, a free course, seven steps to following Jesus. We want to help you. We want to equip you in that. We want to just start conversations with you on, um, on how to follow Jesus, bapti being baptized, praying, reading your Bible, stuff like that. So if that's you, please meet me at the table. It's going to be great. Also, on your way out, if you, if you filled out that Connect card, please drop that in the box. And we have something very, very exciting for all of you guys. We're having a party, a cleanup party, <laughs> just like last week <laughs> and the week before. Was that a downer? I'm sorry. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so just like last week and the week before, we're going to be stacking all the chairs, getting everything ready so it doesn't get dust on during all the construction this week. Um, Pastor Garen has the list of everything that's going to be going on, but... If you were here last week, or if you weren't, please help. Just many, many hands make light work. All right, God bless you. We love you. See you next week.